Hey everybody, now we have yet another classic from 1939, this time being The Hunchback of Notre Dame, starring Charles Lawton in the title role. Now in the latter part of the 15th century, the King's High Justice, Frollo, Sir Cedric Hardwick, has limited access to Paris for the gypsies by requiring them to have a permit to come into the city. Esmeralda, Marina Hara, manages to get past the guards at the gates, but she is forced to take sanctuary in the church when they chase her. When Frollo follows, she escapes from the church with Quasimodo, Charles Lawton, chasing after her under Frollo's orders. He is captured by Phoebus, Ellen Marshall, and sends to be whipped in the town square. Meanwhile, poet Gringoire, Edmund O'Brien, has accidentally stumbled into the Court of Miracles, where he faces the threat of being hanged unless one of the women living there agrees to marry him. Esmeralda does, even though she loves Phoebus. In spite of the fact that he had chased her, she ends up giving Quasimodo a drink of water when, while he is tied down on the pillory, unlike the crowd that was mocking him. Frollo, jealous of Phoebus, murders him and, unable to face his own sin, blames Esmeralda and tries to have her hanged. However, at the last minute, Quasimo swoops down to save her and gets her back into the church, claiming sanctuary. Now, before I get any further, I do have to admit that I have never read the original novel by Victor Hugo. I can only really claim to have seen this movie, the animated Disney film from the 1990s, and the very heavily shortened and heavily sanitized for kids episode of the 90s PBS series Wishbone. So I'll try to go off those, well, more so the Disney film and the, the film and the current at the time I am writing this article for the novel on Wikipedia. Now there is a mu this is a much darker version of the tale, so anybody expecting this to be like the Disney film will be surprised. I, mean, I don't think it goes as dark as the book, but... Uh, the 1939 film keeps the two Frollo brothers from the novel, but, partly due to the Hayes Code at the time, they make the Archdeacon Claude Frollo, who was the main antagonist in the novel, into a good guy, and changes his brother er, Jean from the alcoholic brother into a high justice and gives him many of Claude's characteristics from the novel. Now, Esmeralda is a bit younger here and a little more naive. And Phoebus? Not such a nice guy, as we find that he is also lusting after Esmeralda, but unlike Jean, tries to act on it, and is only really stopped by Jean killing him in a fit of jealousy. Then, of course, we have Claude Pan, as played by character actor Thomas Mitchell in one of his five big roles in 1939, who is uh, more of a cynic and ends up leading the beggars against Notre Dame, instead of the King's Guard, as in the Disney film. Then there's King Louis XI, as played by Harry Davenport, who also played Dr. Mead in that year's Gone with the Wind, but whom I personally will always remember as Judy Garland's grandfather in Meet Me in St. Louis. And he is a kindly king that is thinking of his subjects and wants to see the new age of, of invention, as it exemplified by the recent invention of the printing press. And finally, we have Quasimodo himself, who is deaf due to the bells, as in the, in the book, and possibly half-blind as well, given that uh, one eye doesn't move, although that can be attributed to the mask that actor Charles Lawton had to wear. So with me e at the moment? I'll try to keep the rest of this short. Well, I certainly enjoy the performances of all the actors here, and they are great performances, I think. Part of why I enjoy it with this movie is the sets. Seriously, from what I've read, everything was built for this movie on a ranch owned by a RKO Studios in the San Fernando Valley. For me, it just looks so wonderful, especially in high definition. Although, to be fair, I've never seen this movie in standard definition either. But I do like this movie even better than this, the, the Disney film. Admittedly, as a non-musical drama, I do need to be in a little more of a mood to watch this one, but I still enjoy it very much. And I very much recommend others try it out. This movie is available individually on Blu-ray and DVD from Warner Home Video. And on Blu-ray is part of the 5 year Golden Year collection. And is 1 hour and 57 minutes in length. 
Well, that should be all for this one. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and come back for more.